Hey guys, Magna back here with yet another video. This time we're going to talk about Legacy of the Void and the changes that are upcoming to Terran based upon what they announced at BlizzCon recently. So I'm going to kind of give my analysis as far as what the new units are going to mean, what they're going to do, and mostly their viability and what's going to stick around and what else I think will need to change to make these things work. Um, just as a quick little introduction here, the Terran stuff that they put out is by far the most overpowered stuff right now, so I wouldn't get too attached to these a lot of these ideas if you are a Terran player, um, and especially if you're a player from another race wanting to see this. Don't worry too much because these will be changed quite a bit, I'm sure. So let's take a look at, first of all, some game and mode changes that they introduce with Legacy of the Void. Uh, first of all, all races start the game with more workers than before. As it is right now, it is at 12. And by the way, keep in mind for all these changes, they are very much not in concrete whatsoever. They're going to change a lot uh, from now versus when the game comes out. Uh, but anyway, so all races will start the game with 12 workers as of right now. Um, mineral patches are now 1,000 instead of 1,500. Gas counts appear to be 2,000 instead of 2,500, since they never officially mentioned anything about it, but that's how it was during their show matches. Um, so all three of these first uh, items basically will mean that the bases will mine out faster and games will start up faster. So basically, uh, you'll be right into the action right away. Uh, you're going to have to take a lot more bases a lot quicker in order to stay on top of it if you want to stay on that rule of three mining bases all the time. Um, and it overall should play a lot faster and uh, it'll be much more important as far as when to expand and if you're able to hold that so there'll be a lot more crucial moments of the game rather than just maybe one or two like in the past. Um, another couple of modes they added which I'm just going to touch on really fast is they, they said they're going to be adding automated daily tournaments so that people can just enter it and play uh, so that's pretty interesting kind of seems like they've been thinking about doing that one for a long time and also Archon mode is basically a 2v2 mode where uh, both players are controlling the same race. So, or, or rather not the same race, but the same set of units. So like there's basically one Protoss versus one Terran, but two people are controlling the Protoss and two people are controlling the Terran. So kind of cool. Um, not really sure where that's going to go, but it'll definitely offer more options for playing with your friends. So that's kind of cool. So. Let's jump into the unit changes here, and what they've announced so far is the first new unit is called the Herc. Uh, this is basically kind of like a melee unit. Um, it's not exactly a melee unit, I think it just has a super short range right now. It does a little bit of splash damage, which is actually pretty crazy for a melee unit. Um, and the other cool feature that it has is when it goes to... Alright, I guess you can just assign this, but if you can see on that image there, there's little uh, like wires coming out of them that are hooking up, that are hooking onto these zerglings, which will basically make it so that these melee unit slash tank unit type of things will be able to get to the front of the battle really really easily. So that positioning on these is really easy. Um, this is pretty cool uh, in the sense that it will give lesser micro players an option to deal with zerg armies without having to rely on a lot of other units that are in there right now. If you can just instantly micro a lot of your Hercs to the front line with a series of clicks, then that'll position your army correctly before any fight starts and it'll be a lot less punishing to uh, splitting marines and stuff like that to try and deal with banelings. So that's kind of cool, uh, I thought so far. But the big caveat with this is that I feel like this unit is going to mean the death of the Widow Mine in a lot of its applications. Um, and the reason being is because right now in TVZ, almost all the battles, as far as the Terran success, comes down to how good of Widow Mine hits they get. Um, and it can be to the point where one Widow Mine hitting on the center of a clump of Banelings will just flat out end the game and Terran will win. And to be totally honest, that's not a very cool thing in StarCraft if one semi random event determines whether one player wins or not during a fight. So. For all intents and purposes, if this is their idea with this, is just to kind of get a front line established as soon as possible, then it'll give Terran players the option to 
be able to deal with Zerg and Bane, or rather Ling Baneling armies a lot more easily. And I think that'll mean that the Widow Mine is going to be changed quite a bit to compensate for this. Um, I feel really that the Widow Mine just does a little bit too much right now, and it does it a little bit too unpredictably. And this is a much more solid way to do it. So. I feel like this unit will stick around, and it's going to be, this is probably going to be the coolest Terran unit, um, or rather the coolest change overall, maybe not overall, but it's one of the better ones, in the sense that it makes micro against Ling Baneling a lot more easy, and makes it a lot less gimmicky than it is right now. So I think this is a really cool change, and I think this is a cool new approach to dealing with uh, Zerg Army. So, I don't know what else to say about this unit. I think it may have to be toned down just a little bit because during the show matches in the early game against Zerg, it just kind of killed everything. Um, so I think it'll probably be a lot slower than it is right now, but we'll have to see what happens with this. Uh, next they introduced the Cyclone, and this is the new Warhound, uh, for all intents and purposes. If you guys remember at the beginning of Heart of the Swarm, the Warhound was basically a mech unit that just killed everything, and that is a good summary for what it did. Right now, the Cyclone is the unit that's a mech unit that kills everything. And in its current iteration, there is no way this thing is going to stay the way that it is. The basic functionality of this unit is that you can lock onto a target, and it will continue to fire at that target within this range, you can see with that dotted line. And you can move it around while it's firing at that target. So for, I guess for comparison's sake, this is basically an updated Diamondback that's not named the Diamondback. Uh, it can shoot air units, which you can see right here. It also can shoot ground units. This unit is just ridiculous, and um, there's no way it's going to stay how it is right now. I can imagine this actually being their very first change being announced, and it'll probably even be announced before the beta even comes out. Uh, that's how bad it is. So, not bad in the sense that it's a bad unit. It's bad in the sense that it just really kills the flow of the game. It's, there's no way this is going to stick around like this. What I can imagine though is I can't imagine them reducing the range on its, its firing range here because I think what they want to do is they want to have sort of a map control type of unit that's not a Hellion or a Reaper. And it seems like the theme of the Terran changes is that they're, they're slotting new units into new roles and they're going to find roles for the other units that they kind of replace. So if you opened up with a quick Cyclone, it would kind of defeat the point of opening Reaper for the sake of map control. Reapers would still be useful to scout, but Cyclones would control the map against basically anything in the early game, against basically any race. So it's... I can't... Hmm. I guess the only solution that I've seen so far that I think would fix this is just a reduction in its range as far as where it stays locked on and it fires between, uh, so that players can more easily micro out of it and you'll have to reassign the lock-on uh, type of thing to it. And the way that it works, I'm not sure if I glossed over that too much, is that you have to select the unit that you lock onto, and it won't do anything until it actually is locked on. So the whole lock-on mechanic I think is cool, but the range and the damage and everything else just seem insane right now. It's the same effect as if you took a Phoenix that could hit air and ground units. You gave it slightly slower speed, but a ridiculously long range, is basically how this unit functions right now. And if, if Protoss had that unit, they would never lose. So this this is the water this is the Warhound in the sense that it's very very overpowered right now and it won't stay the way it is but I do think unlike the Warhound it will eventually make its way into the game. So let's talk about the siege tank changes that they made. The only one that I know of is that they made it so that you could drop and pick up siege tanks while they're still in siege mode um, which you can kind of see from this picture right here. You can see the two medevacs carrying two siege tanks that have just been moved and you can see where they were before where those last two tank blasts are. Um, this is a kind of confusing change I think. Um, this will mess up TVT a lot in the sense that gaining position will be a lot easier with siege tanks and TVT right now is actually like Doom Drop Central and being a, imagine being able to doom drop with a whole bunch of tanks that are already sieged and already claiming that territory. I feel like this change might have a negative effect on TVT, but a positive effect on the other two matchups. Um, which is, I mean, it'll get more utility in basically every matchup, but as TVT is right now, it's basically tanks and other stuff. 
there's not really a whole lot of other things that you can do in that matchup as far as a staple unit. So that's the only real concern I have with it. I do like that they're playing around with the idea of having different uh, harassment mechanics and different ways for mech to survive, especially against Protoss, which is why you can see Zealots attacking the tanks here and why the tanks are being moved to kind of demonstrate that they're really trying to push more playstyles in, in TVP especially. So we'll have to see on that. I think that'll probably stick around, but they're going to also have to make some other changes to make Doom Drops and TVT a lot less common because they're going to be totally out of control with this change and position in TVT will be almost meaningless if you can break it that easily with droppable siege tanks, putting them wherever you want. So. I don't know, I think TVT may go through this weird mutation where it starts to get much more about air control rather than tanks at all, and you're going to see a lot of people cutting more corners to try out new things, so I don't know. I don't really know where this is going to go, but I'm just trying to foresee what could happen based on it existing. So let's check out the Thor. Uh, the Thor change is actually fairly predictable. I was a little surprised it hadn't done this earlier since it had uh, kind of harkenings back to the campaign. Basically, the change to the Thor is that you can turn it into its own self-repairing uh, thing while it's out on the battlefield. So, in this picture, in the middle, the, the middle one is shut down. It's being repaired right now, it's not firing, it's not moving, it's still taking damage, but it is repairing on its own. They were vague as far as if the Thor required money to do this. I don't think that it will. Um, but, I like the fact that in two aspects, Number one, there's basically no micro for Thors whatsoever, if they're just kind of masked up as a unit. You just basically aim it with them and they just do whatever they want, and walking them back and forth is pointless. So this seems to give them a little bit more of a, a role as far as micro, and I like that they're pushing it in that direction. So this change I think is probably the most stable as far as just going straight into the game and nothing really being changed too much on it. And for that sake, I don't know there's really a whole much, whole bunch more to say about it. Um, you might see a lot more Thor-centric compositions with the other units that Terran got, but yeah, I don't really know what else to say about that. It seems pretty straightforward. So let's talk about Banshee changes, and the Banshee change that they introduced was basically a speed upgrade after you have a fusion core. And um, seeing this in action is actually pretty scary. Uh, these things are really, really fast. They kill basically whatever you want, and the the advertisement on them is that they outrun any sort of mobile detection, which is really strange. Um, and I don't know that that's really too good for a cloaked unit. Um, so I don't know how stable this change is going to be. I think overall the idea will stay there, but the numbers will definitely shift eventually. And they basically want to give Banshees more of a purpose other than just being a unit that you open up with and hope you can kill some workers, but um, I've played even in the previous iterations of StarCraft as far as Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm against just like straight up Banshee builds, and if they just make tons of Banshees and they can protect them properly, it already was really annoying to have to deal with uh, maps that really favored close by air expansion points and far by ground, say for example uh, a map like Whirlwind, playing against a mass Banshee and like mass Viking, mass Raven type of play was already really annoying. So um, I don't know how much further they're going to going to go down the street, but it seems like already they're fairly attracted to this idea. So I don't see it being altered too much from now until when uh, the game actually comes out. Lastly, let's talk about the Battle Cruiser, which was the last unit that they mentioned in their video. Basically, they want to introduce an ability to the battle cruiser that allows it to teleport anywhere on the map that does not currently have vision, which is a weird idea. It's um, I can't tell it's to, if it's to help them retreat or if it's to help them harass. And so far, if it's if it's centered around the idea that it's meant to harass, then that would mean that basically every unit that they put out would be, or rather, every unit, every change that they made would make Terran more about harassment, except for maybe the Thor change, because that's not really a, a harassment type of unit. But basically, if you can teleport anywhere on the map that you can't see, that means that you could make six battlecruisers, teleport into someone's base, and kill it right away. Obviously, it would take so much energy that you couldn't get back out, 
But what I think it's going to be for, more than anything, is a way to retreat your battlecruisers and keep them preserved. Um, which I think is actually kind of cool, um, in the sense that the battlecruisers could be repaired and then sent back out. You'd obviously have to teleport to a weird place on the map where you don't have vision, but it's still safe to teleport to. I think the idea of just making battlecruisers and diving in somewhere is not going to be a thing. Um, mostly because it'll be way too risky, and the things are still too damn slow to get them out of the middle of an opponent's base anyway. So it'd be like, yay, I teleported in and I killed your, your Nexus, but all my battlecruisers died and now I don't have anything. So that's, that's the way that people immediately think about this, is that if you can teleport to anywhere, then you can just teleport right to someone's base and kill it. And that would maybe be true for like fringe bases or something, but I think this is going to mostly be for the idea that if you get battlecruisers out, and as soon as they start to get hurt, you can just warp them back across the map and kind of walk away from the battle while assuredly keeping your battlecruisers alive. Um, that's pretty cool, I think, and again, I think this is mostly a Protoss change because um, against Protoss, the, the Battlecruisers have basically no place whatsoever right now because of Tempest and because of Void Rays and because of feedback. So I think this is an interesting idea and I'd like to see it go through, um, but I think there's going to be a decent number of changes to this and I'm not sure how powerful it's going to be. They mostly need to make Battlecruisers a little more accessible uh, overall for them to start getting mixed into normal play more often. And it's weird because if you need to pay for a really expensive unit and you need to wait for it to build in order to get its payoff, you usually just have to sit there and wait. And it seems like they're trying to eliminate a lot of the sitting and waiting in Legacy of the Void. So I don't know. It seems a little conflicting. I think the idea is cool. but. Ultimately, this may be a change that just doesn't work for one reason or another. Um, and, and by that I mean it gets into the game and people just never use it. So we'll have to see what happens with it. So, um, Lastly, I just want to kind of make a little bit of a summary as far as what they want to do with the game overall. So all these, all these changes are definitely very much subject to change and you can expect a huge portion of these not being true when the game actually comes out. But the ideas they want to go for is a game that's much faster, much more about micro and control, which Terran has always been about. And I feel like they are giving you a little bit more control while eliminating some of the more silly aspects of the control, as far as it being very unforgiving and as far as it being semi random, like I was talking about with the Widow Mind stuff before. For the most part, and like we were talking about before, it seems like they're to going for a big component of the game to be harassment and basically every change here was about harassment as far as I could tell excuse me so we'll have to see if that's where they want to go with this but it seems like that's their overall direction with the whole worker change and with the whole uh, base minerals and gas change it seems like they want to more have more emphasis on the difference between all-ins and macro play in the sense that if somebody commits with an all-in that it's either going to end right then or they will and they won't have any options to go back and macro and kind of recover from it and it seems like the game is going to really reward players that can get their expansions on time and find smart builds to hold bases because it's going to be a lot different just playing for a little while I could already tell that the base mineral change and the base gas change is huge uh, your bases will mine out about three or four minutes faster than they do now which means that if you're not taking a fourth at about, you know, like 15 minutes or so, you're going to start falling behind, and that's craziness. Um, map control seems to be another thing they really want to emphasize a lot. And it, going back to Brood War now, uh, Brood War was really all about small things going on all over the map all the time. And that's kind of where Heart of the Storm started to get into a little bit, but they're going even further with that idea with Legacy of the Void. So you can expect to have to multitask and juggle a lot of different tasks at the same time just to see if you can manage them all. Um, most of all, and especially with Terran against Protoss, they definitely want to try to diversify all the strategies that are available and that are viable. So I think, once again, the push for Mech is going to get even furthered, and the push for even Sky Terran is going to get furthered in a lot of different ways with the Banshee change and with the Battlecruiser change and with the other units that can actually support those really well. So. We'll have to see what happens with that, but um, I'm really hoping that TVP and especially, or especially TVT, or especially TVP, but also to a lesser extent TVZ, 
we'll start to see a lot more variety rather than just Marines, uh, medevacs, marauders, and whatever support they want to throw in there to make it work. Um, so I guess we'll see. And I think this they've finally they've started to realize that this is their last chance to really make StarCraft uh, a different experience than what it's been so far. So the changes are they do seem radical, and they're radical for a good reason. And I mean radical not in the sense that like uh, you're gonna get a pizza and go skateboarding. Uh, I mean radical in the sense that they are very um, off the handle right now. So you're gonna see a lot of these changes definitely toned down a lot and regulated over time, but I like the direction they're going and it's gonna be really cool to see. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope it at least gave you a little bit of perspective as far as where they want to go with this game in the future. So um, sign up for beta, which should be available now. You can go ahead and opt in and they'll send you an email when if you get invited. So you can check this stuff out and help them test and give them feedback and whatnot. But um, I'll be back with more videos uh, pretty soon on Legacy of the Void, so look out for it, and I'll see you guys later.